So Chris worked on this a little bit more on Sunday. I ended up taking the day off. So the muffler's mounted back on. The end cap is sealed. We have the swelled pipe out the end there. We have a 10-foot piece of exhaust pipe coming, so we're going to get that bent up and kind of drop it more towards the center and low. When that shows up, we have uh, exhaust wrap to wrap the pipe, try to keep some of the heat off of the hydraulic lines. And we got the ends we finally needed so we can make our battery cables delivered. So we'll hop on getting some battery cables made for this. We've got to get the exhaust finished up. We need to weld that bracket in on the choke. We've got the choke working good now. We just want to keep it so this can't twist, so that just needs to get welded in real quick. And the scissor lift is going to be pretty much done. Another project we got going today is ball joints on an F-250 Super Duty. This thing also got an oil change, fuel filters, uh, had a torn boot for one of the charge pipes throwing a low boost code. So the choke works. As you can see, that's why we had to move that exhaust, how close it came to that arm in there. I got none. Do you have a choke up there? Yeah, the choke works from up there. All right, is there some interlock that's stopping us right now from having start control? Yep. Ground control. Here we go. So it'll try to crank. So when we go to platform control, it does nothing. 
But if you watch the wire to the starter, both of them are sending 12 volts to the starter. We're getting power down that wire when we press the start button on either control. But it's not even trying to start when we're on platform. So that's kind of weird. I have to figure that out. It's right there. That's our start button from the uh, platform controls. Getting 12 and a half volts. The only thing is this is an LED and digital test light. So I'm gonna see if I get an incandescent bulb one and see if we're still getting good power when we have an actual load against it. All right. Oh, you get the uh, platform. Yep, yep. Hit it. What's it showing? 2.3 ohms, 2.4, 2.5. All right, go to the ground control and try it. Let's see what the ground control does. What's it showing 1.8 ohms. So we've got some resistance. We, we have less than an ohm difference, though. Yeah, but... You'd think for less than one ohm, we'd still have a starter. Well, yeah. Huh. All right, so what we ended up doing is we hooked up the meter here to a voltage drop test. And we are voltage dropping through that... Uh, start wire. From ground control, we have like 9 tenths of a volt to voltage drop. That's not bad. Anything under a volt is always good. When we try to do it from the top controls, we're seeing like 8 to 9 volts of voltage drop. So what this test shows us that we couldn't see with the resistance test is, this will show you if a wire is bad when it's flowing a load. A resistance test puts a really small amount of power through that wire. I mean, most meters have a 9 volt battery or some double A's or something. It's using that to run the voltage through the system to see what the resistance is by how much power makes it back. So, I mean, if you have one or two good strands in a wire, it'll show up good on resistance, but it won't work. So by doing a voltage drop test, I'm actually seeing what the difference in voltage is from the input of the wire to the output of the wire. And if I'm losing a bunch in the middle, there's something that's taking up that power, like resistance. So this is a much better way to test a wire like that. And it's how I like to test stuff is with a voltage drop. And that found a problem for us. So we're t we've got the uh, control box up on the deck apart. Chris is getting the ground control box apart. There's nothing really easily seen in the deck box for resistance. And if we jump around the switch with a jumper wire, we have the same problem. So it's not in the switch. So it's going to be somewhere in the wiring from that box all the way down the chassis to the ground box. From the ground box, then everything runs back to the motor. So our problem's going to be in there somewhere. Well, we found a mouse nest in there, so that's always good. All right, so we got the new tubing bender, or new to us tubing bender at least, <coughs> sitting here on the floor. Went ahead and took a paint marker, put dots where I'm gonna have to drill, so now we're gonna move it out of the way and I'll start drilling holes in the floor so we can put our anchors in so we can bolt it. That way we can take it out of the way when we're not needing it. So I've got the first two drilled and anchored in the floor. Chris is gonna go ahead and drill the third one. I was going a little farther than that to get them to set just below flush with the floor. Alright, now we take an anchor. Here's a bolt if you want to drop it down there real quick, clean out a little bit of that. That's it. Now I've got anchors on the floor. Got one more to go. So we got the tubing bender all mounted up and I've started getting it freed up a little bit. It sat outside for a while so it's a little seized up but spray a little bit of oil on it and this thing will be working good again in no time. Well there we go. We've gotten everything all lubed up. It all moves freely. 
All the pins have been pulled out and cleaned up. This thing's about ready to go as soon as they bother dropping our exhaust pipe off. Somebody has ran the die into the tool. So it's just gonna clean up that messed up edge a little bit so it's not as bad. See what it looks like after. We should have used Monster. It would have been back to its normal shine. You're not going to waste one of your monsters on this. I know you. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was, and it'll definitely work for what we're going to use it for. Another small project today is we fixed the ground cable on the Millermatic 251. So now we can have our vice grip ground back on it. And then Chris has been tearing into the wiring over here as I've been working on some of that stuff. And mice have been in here. Clean out the mouse nest and they started chewing into some wires. So that's going to be fun. The more we tear into this, the more we find wrong with it. Yeah. Look like inch and a half. Because that looks awfully small in that die set. Here, it's handy your tape measure. So we got the piece of exhaust in there. That's about where we wanted it to sit. Now, it did crimp a little more where we bent it than we wanted to, but we are using the wrong size dies on that bender over there. We don't have ones to fit this. And originally, this was only one inch exhaust. That's inch and a half. So we purposely went with a little bit bigger pipe so that if it did do that, that we'd still have plenty of flow through it. Which, for this piece of equipment, it's not going to be a problem at all. So we got the pipe in, and we went ahead and wrapped it. There's 25 foot of wrap on there with a pretty heavy overlay, so that should do a pretty good job of keeping heat off those lines. So the reason I wanted to start this up and get it running as soon as we got this on there is when I do exhaust wraps like this, I put them on wet. So you pull them as tight as you can when they're wet, they give a little more, you can get it tighter. And then once it sits and takes all the moisture out, those things are on there, they're not going anywhere. I did the pipes on my Harley probably five years ago and I've never had a problem with them. Unfortunately, I didn't have any safety wire. So there's a hose clamp on the bottom holding it on, but it's not in a visible place, so I'm not too worried about it. So I just let this thing run for a minute just to get the exhaust hot. We'll let this steam out and then uh, it, it should be finished on the exhaust wrap side. That should help keep some of the heat off of those hydraulic lines. Yep, go ahead and hit it. Uh, try it from down below. Hey, wait, I figured out the problem. You gave me the relay block with no relay in it. Hey. <laughs> All right, let's try that again after I get a relay. All right, let's try it with the relay now. It works from the platform control. Hit the ground. All right, let's make the battery cable for this and this thing can go away. 